This is the Saturn V rocket. Well, a Lego model of the Saturn V rocket. And this is how the astronauts of every Apollo mission went to the moon. It's a massive three-stage rocket standing 363 feet tall. If you were to stand next to it, this is how small you would be. And yet, all of this rocket is mostly just fuel to get this small section, the Apollo stack, and it's three astronauts to the moon. So how does this get you to the moon? So let's talk about rockets in general for a moment. The Saturn V is a multi-stage rocket, meaning it's more like three rockets stacked on top of each other. As one stage runs out of fuel, it falls away to the Earth and the stage above it ignites. By the time you get into space, most of the rocket has actually fallen back to Earth and only the very top of the rocket has actually made it to orbit. The space shuttle was also multi-stage. You started with all of this on the launch pad and you ended up with this in space. Okay, so why use a multi-stage rocket? Because of something called the rocket equation. The more weight you want to put into space, the more fuel you need, which means you need a bigger rocket to hold all that fuel, which adds weight and requires more fuel, so you need a bigger rocket, and on and on it goes. One of the ways to reduce this problem is to throw away the fuel tanks once they're empty, since they're just useless weight once you've used them up. So now it's July 16th, 1969. Apollo 11 sits in the launch pad and the giant Saturn V rocket is ready to go. The countdown clock hits nine seconds and this is when the five F1 engines ignite. The countdown hits zero and the Saturn V slowly begins lifting off the pad. For our astronauts sitting at the very top, this is actually the scariest moment because the Saturn V cannot sit back down on the launch pad. If anything goes wrong, the rocket would blow up in one of the largest non-nuclear explosions in history. Thankfully, that never happened, and after 12 seconds, the Saturn V has cleared the launch tower. One minute into flight, the rocket breaks the sound barrier. The first stage here has burned for about 2 minutes and 41 seconds, and lifted the rocket to 41 miles high. During that time, it has burned 5 million pounds of fuel. That's 13 metric tons of fuel burned every second. So then, the engines cut off, and the first stage separates from the Saturn V, and this, the first stage, falls back to the Earth and lands into the Atlantic Ocean. The launch escape system is also jettisoned here. So the second stage engines ignite and burn for about 6 minutes, propelling the rocket to 109 miles high and 15,000 miles per hour. The second stage and the interstage rings now separate from the Saturn V and also fall back to the Earth. The third stage reignites into what's called the Translunar Injection, or the TLI, and the spacecraft reaches 25,000 miles per hour as it shoots towards the moon. 40 minutes later, it's time to get Apollo 11 moon ready. This part, called the Apollo Command Service Module, now separates from the third stage and rotates 180 degrees to dock with the lunar module. The Apollo stack now pulls away from the third stage, and the third stage is set on a course to leave the Earth-Moon system and begins an orbit around the Sun, where it will actually be discovered by astronomers in the year 2002, 31 years later. So now, Apollo 11 and its three astronauts have a three-day journey ahead of them to the Moon. After the astronauts and the lunar module land on the Moon, rendezvous with the command module in orbit, return to the Earth, and splash down in the Pacific Ocean. All that's left of the Saturn V rocket is the Columbia capsule and its three astronauts here. It took a decade of design, construction, and testing, and six launches before the Saturn V rocket was ready to land astronauts on the moon 50 years ago. Of its 13 launches, not a single payload or crew member was lost. Many Americans, including my own great-grandparents, drove to Cape Canaveral in 1969 and watched the Apollo 11 launch. For the rest of us, there are four complete Saturn V rockets that we can go and see today. Two at the Space and Rocket Center in Alabama, one at the Johnson Space Center in Texas, and one at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You should absolutely go and visit one. The Saturn V rocket was truly a marvel of human history. Oh God.